England and South Africa have set the early pace in Group 2 of the Super 8s and put themselves in good position to qualify for the semi-finals. Now they go up against each other in St. Lucia in what will be the first day game we see at what has been the highest scoring venue of this World Cup so far. We build up to that crunch Super 8 encounter on Maruti Suzuki Arena presents ESPN Trick and 4 Time Out powered by Dish TV Watcho in the company of Mone Morkel. Mone, good to see you. Thank you for your time. England are starting to look the part. They might have had their trouble in getting through the group stage, but they were clinical against West Indies. How do South Africa look to stop them? They definitely did flex their muscles against the West Indies. And, you know, they looked like the, the England team that everybody was worried about at the start of the comp. comp. You know, they played like true defending or you know, true champions. And South Africa will have to, to plan well, they'll have to execute well, they'll have to be clinical in the execution with, with, with bat and ball because, you know, I think sort of because what happened with, with England in the, in, the, in the group stages, um, you know, they, they, they sort of wanted to take it a step up. And um, the way that they played against the West Indies in terms of, you know, the quality with the bat was, 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 was fantastic to see as a supporter, a cricket supporter. So in terms of South Africa, um, yes, they need to give their, their, their best bowlers, you know, the new ball, uh, who's going to be the day, on the day with the conditions, the most effective on the surface. Is it Rabada maybe taking the first over to see if he can swing the ball or they keep going with Marco Janssen, um, you know, tall left arm seamer, extra bounce, he can sh shape the ball back in. So a bit of homework for South Africa to, to be done before this game because England is definitely, you know, trying or they're definitely finding a bit of form. Yeah, so let's tuck right into that tactical passage because, uh, as you pointed out, uh, Joss Butler, if we remember his words from eight or nine months ago, they don't like being referred to as defending champions. They call themselves attacking champions and they attack from the word go. Yeah. Joss Butler and Phil Salt firing the way he is in the power play becomes so important to stop for South Africa. So how would you tactically shape up? Are you looking to be more defensive or do you need to go all out to try and get them out? I think you need to have an aggressive mindset uh, against uh, those two. Really try and, and knock them over. Um, you know they bat so deep, and like you say, they're going to attack. So with that, the, you know, the risk or the opportunities for wickets will come. Uh, for me, it is you go with the day on the day with the, with the bowler that I say on, on the morning if they bowl first or they bowl second. Who can you make use of that no, new ball? Who can make use of the the conditions uh, the best? Can you maybe give the the first over to Keshav Maharaj? You know he's he's bowling well. Uh, he got a, a nice bit of drift and spin uh, and bounce against USA the other day. So you know with it being a, a day game, might that uh, um, you know help South Africa to take maybe pace off? But if I if I was sort of in charge of the team, I'll give it to to my senior player KJ Rabada. Uh, you know he's a guy that can can seam the ball. He's a guy to, who can swing the ball. He can bowl at high pace and say, listen, you're in charge of the first over with um, you know with the, with the Marco Janssen something different, shaping the ball back in. But, you know, from a South African point of view, they'll need to, to knock over Salt um, and, and Josh because, you know, if they give them momentum with what is to come in that batting lineup, you know, that, that can be you know, hard work for South Africa on the day. Just going to play devil's advocate here. You brought up Keshav Maharaj. There's also Andrik Nokia, who has quite an intriguing past against Joss Butler in this format. Would you be tempted to maybe shake up the usual scheme of things and not give Marco Janssen the new ball? There have been times when Janssen has been a bit nervy to begin with in big games. Uh, I don't think so. I think, you know, you, if you've got certain roles. Uh, Nurkia for me is a guy that can potentially bowl one over in the power play, but you want to use that express pace um, on a St. Lucia surface where there's a little bit of extra bounce. You know, you, I think the best way to use um, Nurkia would be outside the power play. Really hit that aggressive length, uh, you know, at 150 and, and try and make life for, for the English uncomfortable. They're all compulsive on the short ball. You know, they will attack um, you if you bowl that sort of hard length. And if the wicket is anything that we've seen um, the last couple of games where it is true bounce, you know, the best way I think for Nurkia to fit in is outside the power play. So I'll stick, I'll stick with the combination or the, the way South Africa sort of went with the with with the um, power play lineup. Uh, the only thing I'd consider on the day is maybe giving Kesh uh, over one or two. Okay, just a final South Africa bowling combination question here, Morne. They did finally go in with two spinners for the first time in that game against USA. 
Uh, do you think that is still the best mix against England or would you consider recalling Otniel Bartman? That will all the, depend uh, on, on the day, uh, with it being a day game, you know, do they feel the wicket will, will, be, will sort of dry out and get a little bit slower in the afternoon where you can bring in um, a Shamsi where you can play a big, bigger role. You know, Otniel has been, he's been incredible for them up front, uh, taking wickets. He's uh, a confident death bowler at the moment. He wants that challenge. And I think, you know, anybody, any bowler that, that wants that opportunity, wants to bowl a tough, a tough overs, he's a special person to have in your team. So that will clearly depend on the day. Um, overhead conditions, if, you know, if there's maybe rain around or if the wicket looks a bit drier. Uh, but you know, if it uh, if it's if it's dry, if it's um, you know, if it's going to be slow, I, I reckon I'll keep with with, with Shamsi. Shamsi is also a guy that's very hard to get away. Um, in, a, in that middle over, so he can squeeze and bowl well in partnership with a Nurkia, uh, and they wicket taking uh, bowlers. So for me, yeah, I, I would potentially just go on the day, uh, and who's going to be the most effective effective on that surface. Right. On the South African batting perspective now, Morne, do you feel there's some pressure mounting on Reza Hendricks? Hasn't quite had the best start uh, to this World Cup. 61 runs in five innings so far. Uh, the only alternative, batting alternative on the bench is Ryan Rickleton, who doesn't have a lot of T20I experience, mm. but was one of the best performers in the SA20. I feel when, when you go into the World Cup, you, you've got your 11 or 12 or 13 sort of as a coach in your mind. And I think it's very important that you, that you stick to that, that, that combination uh, for as long as possible. Riza looked, looked well against USA. He tried to, to take the game on again on the surface that was in the, in the morning a little bit tacky, maybe a little bit slower and stoppy. Will St. Lucia be, you know, the key for him where on a, on a far, faster bouncier wicket where he can really hit through the line of the ball? Will that unlock um, the Riza Hendricks? I reckon South Africa needs to stick with him. He's a senior player. He plays, plays pretty well. Uh, you know, two, two left-handers at the top there, maybe when Rickleton comes in, um, can be, you know, a question mark. But, uh, uh, yeah, I think for South Africa point of view with their batting, it was just pleasing to see Quentin the Cock last night getting runs and, and, and looking like... You know, he was he was seeing the ball well, moving well, and Aidan Markram, one of the KPIs, will definitely be you know, to get the partnerships and big partnerships. And um, you know, they got a 110 run partnership and a 51 there in the middle. So, f from a from a batting point of view for South Africa, that was that was that was great to see. And you know, it just seems like that whole unit, although they haven't scored runs, they're just in good space. I think um, you know that's the most important thing going into the Super Eight phase where. It's now a completely clean slate. Uh, you can move on from what happened in the group phases at different conditions. And if, you're, if your batting unit is in, in, in a good mindset and they feel like they're hitting the ball well and they're in good space, you need to run with those experienced players because um, you know, it's two tough games coming up for South Africa and you don't want to chop and change too much at this time of, this, uh, of the tournament. All right, just set up the South African batting lining up against this English bowling lineup, Mornay, because England, after fiddling around a bit with their bowling mix, appear to have arrived at quite a varied mix. You've got high pace options, you've got cutter bowlers and you've got a varied spin attack. Who hold uh, the yeah. greatest significance for South Africa when it comes to dealing with such a varied mix of bowlers? Look, I, I, th I think if you, with the, if, you, if you sit in a South African uh, camp, they would really look forward to to the pace on the ball that uh, England might bring you know Archer would uh, I think that is that is sort of um, uh, a contest or a battle that the South African batters would would enjoy um, but you know for me if I look at that lineup you know Heinrich Klaas is, is, is key there he's, he's a guy that with the he's, he's going to arrive with the reputation Bowlers, bowlers, you know, fear. They, as soon as he gets the uh, one is shot away or he starts finding a little movement, you know, bowlers will feel the pressure bowling to Heinrich Glassen. So, can the top order uh, again set that platform for a Glassen, Miller, and Stubbs to to come and, and take it, take the, not take the game away, but you know, put a put a score on the board for South Africa and for their bowlers to defend maybe in the afternoon. But I, I reckon it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a shootout between between the batters. It's two powerful batter, batting lineups. You know, it's going to be exciting cricket to watch, and you know the bowlers are going to be tested. And um, yeah, so you know they've got two fantastic bowling lineups. 
but I reckon South Africa would enjoy that extra bit of pace on the ball on the surface. Yeah, it promises to be a fun encounter. South Africa do hold the advantage. If you look at the history, they've won four of their six meetings against England at the Men's T20 World Cup. Let's see if they can make it five out of seven. Thank you so much, Moni Mokul, for setting up the game for us. Introducing the epic new Swift. Time to go Swifting. Watch your app. Look, one OTT's price is all OTT's chances. Watch your.